In any custody case, the really big factor, the determining factor of how your case is going to come out doesn't necessarily rely on your lawyer. Honestly, in most cases, it's going to turn on the GAL, the guardian ad litem. We've talked about this in other videos, but basically the guardian ad litem is appointed by the court to be the eyes and ears of the judge. The judge can't go out and look at everybody house, everybody's houses and talk to everybody, interview and make a decision. So they appoint this GAL to go out and interview the parents, to interview the children, take a look at the house, you know, basically come back to the judge and make a recommendation as to how this custody or how the visitation or the parenting time or the decision making, how all of that will be resolved. And in all honesty, this factor, who you have as the guardian ad litem will make or break your case. Because honestly, there's so much human bias that can be done at this level of the case. Okay, and especially as Muslims, we don't have too many Muslim GALs who would understand what the family is going through or why people are doing things. They don't understand the religious and the cultural background, and they end up making false allegations or making very bad decisions or recommendations to the judge. For example, this whole Lota issue. You know, I know this sounds ridiculous, but you know, as Muslims, we use water to wash ourselves. And when you're young, you need your parents to help you do that. There's been so many cases where the GLs just don't understand that. And I've had cases where, you know, people are, people are calling DCFS because dad, you know, used a LOTA. You know, so the point is, you know, um, kind of weird. But the point is that without that cultural sensitivity, many GALs are doing a disservice to Muslim families. And we're doing a disservice to ourselves when we can't resolve you know, custody issues on our own and we leave it to some random person. So the way that a GAL gets appointed is first, the a couple, uh, the husband and wife, the mom and dad, they need to see if they can come up with their own um, schedule, okay, and their own decision making without anybody else. If that's not possible or they're unable to agree, then you're sent to mediation. And again, you know, we've been talking about mediation, we've been talking about all these things, this is where we should try to resolve at least the custody part of our cases in mediation. Take as much mediation as possible. See if you can talk to each other, right? I understand if there's abuse, there's other things, other things might be necessary. But for the vast majority of divorces, I think that you can resolve it in mediation. And basically, if mediation doesn't work, then a guardian ad litem is appointed we should try to avoid a guardian ad litem being appointed. And if a guardian ad litem is being ap appointed, we need to make sure that our attorneys know who that person is, that they've researched them, they understand their biases, they understand that, okay, do they favor the man or the woman? Do they favor this type of working person or that type of working person? Do they have a problem with whatever, right? And so the more experience your attorney has, the more they can bring to the table to give you that insight into who that guardian ad litem should be. If you stay to the end of the video, hit the like button for more videos on topics of divorce, marriage, society. Um, go ahead and subscribe. There'll be a lot more coming out. Uh, I don't know if you've noticed or not, but this is a new camera that my wife just bought me. So let me know if you can tell the difference or not. Anyways, until next time, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.